first time home buyer advice. Today we're going to talk about initial loan disclosures, what they are and what you need to pay attention to on them and what you need to not worry about. Okay. So your offer has been accepted by the seller. You are now in contract. Once I, the lender receive the contract, I trigger the file. Um, what is triggering? Triggering means that I have a certain amount of information that makes it so that your file is active. Okay. Putting that address in my situation would be triggering the file because I've already fully underwritten you and have everything else. Okay. Now, once your file is triggered, we have three business days to get you what's known as initial loan disclosures. Initial loan disclosures are federally required and it's federally required that we get it to you within three business days of that address going in with the other information like your social security clearly. Now, you will get this and you'll be like, a lot of people do not read them. They just click through them, right? Cause we're like, Hey, we need you to review and sign the initial disclosures. So they just go click, 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 click. Okay. Now, do you need to read them with a fine tooth comb? It's a good idea to read them. Okay. The bulk of them is 900,000 disclaimers as to, you know, uh, reduced liability, right? Like it's just, uh, for instance, there's one page that says mortgage fraud is a crime. Okay. <laughs> it is a crime. I tell you guys that all the time, right? You know, um, anything a lender's ever been sued over is generally covered in the initial disclosures. Okay. Um, it's really, you know, it used to be back in the day, like 10, 12 pages. Now it's like 40 to 50. And there's a booklet at the end by the consumer finance protection bureau on how to compare lenders a, a, a bit about buying a house. You know, there's some stuff in there as well. So, what do you really need to pay attention to? Cause let's be honest, it's a lot of paperwork and a lot of it is so legalese and it doesn't even pertain to you. Like a lot of packages will have something where it talks about adjustable rate mortgages when you're getting a 30 year fixed. Okay. It's literally a package that I would call the CYA package. Okay. It's cover your ass, right? It's a lender covering their ass. Okay. So what's an initial loan disclosures that you guys really need to care about? the application. O M G. So important. Here's why I want you guys to really pay attention to it. I want you to look at the way your name is spelled. Don't just scan it. Check the spelling. Okay. Where I see the biggest mistakes down the road is someone will get, we'll get all the way to closing guys. Like we'll have loan docs out. They'll be like, you spelled my name wrong. It's been the same since the first day. So you want to check early because you don't want to end up in a position where you're delaying your close because it could have been caught earlier. You know, uh, name misspellings, social security off by a digit. You know, you'd be surprised. You can still pull credit with social, social security in many cases off a digit. Um, date of birth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to make sure you're paying attention to occupancy. Yeah. You know, there's some people where they're like, well, Jen, your rate's higher. And I'm like, you're buying this house as an investment property. I don't see how my rate could be higher. And it's because the lender has done your loan as owner occupied, even though you have no plans to live there. Yeah. There will be lenders sometimes who are pulling, you know, stupid stuff to try to get you guys homes, assuming that you're not going to get it or pay attention. So always check the occupancy. Is it legit? You know, if it's owner occupied, are you really going to live there? Um, so you want to make sure we have your job correct, right? Because sometimes what will happen is, let's say I pre-approve you in January, you get into contract in June, you change jobs in May, you haven't told me yet, right? I'm just going to send out the application. Then you're going to be like, Jen, I switched my job. You need to, like, why don't you know that it, you didn't tell us? <laughs> okay. So you always want to look at it and go, okay, what needs to be corrected? Now, stuff that doesn't need to be corrected. If the initial loan disclosures have that you've been at your job two years and one month, and you've actually been there two years and seven months, does that matter? No, that's going to get fixed anyways. The um, employment history always gets fixed during that processing underwriting part, and it gets fine-tuned if you've already been underwritten, it gets updated again at that time. The initial loan disclosures really are going out to say, hey, this is the type of loan we're doing. This is what to expect with costs. This is who you say you are. <laughs> These are what you have declared. You know, that is why they're going out. So check your employment, especially if you've had an employment change. If anything's changed with the way you get paid, tell us day one. Okay. So if I qualified you and you were salary and you switched to commission last month, that's going to blow up your loan. Tell me now, 
Don't wait till, don't hope that we won't find it out. We will find it out. We always find it out. We don't like, we don't even look for the stuff. It happens. We find it out as part of the normal process. Okay. So you want to go through all of that, make sure it's accurate. Know that we can update, you know, and you may look at the income and I'll see this with like, um, disability and someone will be like, you have my income too high. We're grossing it up right? Or a self-employed borrower will say, you have my income too low. We're going off your tax returns, right? So the way that we have income in there, you know, if you see something that looks totally wrong, of course, say, hey, I just, I, you know, I saw this. How does that work? And we'll tell you how we calculated it. You know, sometimes people will go, you don't have my pension. And it's because we didn't know about it. So it's a good idea to make sure you really read through that application. Don't assume it's right. The application is the information that we have at that time. Okay. Now, if you're like, I got these initial disclosures, but my homeowner's insurance quote that I just got 10 minutes ago is $50 lower. Guys, the, the initial disclosures are an estimate, okay? You know, if I've got the homeowner's insurance as $100 and you get a quote for $50, right? We'll update it. That's gonna get updated during the underwriting and processing of the loan. So don't stress that, okay? The taxes are gonna get updated once we have that information from title. Um, the other thing where people, you know, they're like, you have the balances on my credit cards wrong. Don't worry about that unless they're paid off and we're asking you to pay stuff off. And the reason I say don't worry about it is because in order for us to change the the amount of those, we can't just go in the system and go blip, 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 update. No, it's like you have to do a credit supplement. It's a nightmare. Lenders are pulling from your credit report. Whatever was on your credit report when we pulled is what's gonna show as your balances. So credit reports are good for 120 days. So if I once again approved you in January and now it's May, right? There's a very good chance your balances are, are gonna have changed, but your application's not gonna reflect that because we're still using that credit report and that's okay. Now look, if you went out and you bought a car or a big item or your credit card went up $100,000, Give me a heads up, please. <laughs> but beyond that, if you're like, no, I paid this one down $100, we can't make the changes. Doing credit supplements are both expensive and time consuming. And I would only be doing a credit supplement in a situation where you needed to, to qualify. Okay, super important. So the other thing to check on the application is the declarations. Yes, declarations. This is where you're saying yes to knowing on questions. A lot of times people just click, 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 and they don't really read the questions. Um, and sometimes they click wrong. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your loan will get declined because you clicked wrong. Like, do you intend to live in this house? You accidentally clicked no because you thought you had to hit no on everything, but you do intend to live there, right? So always check the declarations, make sure they're accurate. Very important. Okay. Loan estimate, it's the most important part. The loan estimate. So anything a lender gives you prior to being in contract is a summary. I mean, they, you can call it whatever you want, but it's a summary. You could say, well, it's a loan estimate. No, it's not. I mean, it's not a real one. Until you're in contract, it's not binding in any way, shape or form. Once you're in contract, that loan estimate has weight, okay? So like, for instance, if I send out in that initial application, uh, the initial disclosure package, right? If I have that the appraisal is $500 and the appraisal ends up being $700, right? I can't suddenly charge you $700. I'm eating $200. The loan estimate, once you're in contract, has weight, okay? So you want to go through it because sometimes what you'll see with lenders is what you saw over here and what you see here are night and day. But most people aren't checking here because they saw that and they're like, well, it'll be the same, right? Maybe. Maybe, I don't know, it depends on who you're working with. Also depends on if your rate was locked, right? You know, that's the thing too. Until your rate is locked, although this loan estimate has, has weight, not with rate, you know, a lender could, if you're not locked, it can change. It's that simple, it's that simple. So if they send out a loan estimate at five and a half, and you know, it's not locked. It does not mean you're getting five and a half. It just means it's a loan estimate with five and a half, but it's not locked, so it's not binding, okay? And that's where people get tripped up a lot is they'll see a loan estimate, they'll see the five and a half, they'll see the payment, they'll go great. They won't look for that box that says locked. Yes, it, it sounds like that too. I've, I was shocked as well. Locked, say it with me. <laughs> okay, um, if it's not locked, it is not binding, period. 
cannot stress it enough. This is where people get bamboozled all the time because a lender will bait them with a loan summary that's really low. They bait them once they're in contract and then a week or so before closing, they go, hey, we really need to lock you now. The market's really moved up. We're now at 6% with two points. And you're like, what? I was at five and a half with nothing. And they're like, you weren't locked. You didn't tell us to lock. And you go, I had to tell you to lock? Well, yeah, of course. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, I like to talk to everyone about rates as quickly as possible because I never want to be in that situation. I hate it when people wait till the end to lock. It is always so dramatic and stressful. It's like, look, if there's a good rate, let's lock it. Let's let you see it. Let's let you be comfortable and sleep at night. We're both going to sleep at night, right? Because I don't want to get into any of that drama where the market moves. And in a market this volatile, uh, yeah, it's not fun, you know, and you're going to want to talk to your lender about, hey, if I lock, do I have the ability to renegotiate and what are the terms? Okay. Very important. But if you get that loan estimate and you think you're locked and it doesn't say locked, you're not locked. Mm -hmm. So important. Oh my God. The other thing on the loan estimate that's so important is box A. Box A is what the lender is charging you to do that loan. Make sure it matches up with what you think they're charging you to do that loan. What I hear from people all the time is, well, they told me on the phone and the loan estimate doesn't match. And that's why it's like, I hate to say it, but you really can't trust what people say on the phone. You need to see it in writing. Now, if you're like, Jen, they have 700 reviews. Like, can I trust? You should be able to. Like, seriously, if everyone loves them and they have good reviews, the odds they're going to lie to you on the phone are really low. You know, we do see that often lenders who pull this type of shenanigan have reviews where someone says, hey, they promised me this and gave me that, right? Bait and switch. Bait and switch is a very big thing in lending. And the government keeps on trying to figure out ways to stop it, which I commend because it is harmful to consumers. But at the same point, if you're not locked, there is nothing you can do. Nothing. doesn't matter what they told you. If you're not locked, doesn't matter. So you got to check your own paperwork. And if you're really confused about it, just let us know. We'll look at it. I mean, Alyssa looks at <laughs> Alyssa, between Alyssa, Jen, Sandy, and myself, and Sam, we look at a lot of loan estimates. So we're happy to look at it. And sometimes people will come to me and they'll be like, Jen, I think I'm getting ripped off. And I'll look at the loan estimate. And I'll be like, no, this is a good deal. And they're like, are you sure? I'm like, no, it's a good deal. You know, so we're always going to be honest. If someone's treating you well, we will commend them. If someone's not, we're going to point it out. Um, but yeah, look, if you think the rate's locked, definitely check. So what else? Those are really the two biggest parts that I think are important in the initial loan disclosure package is that application and that loan estimate. Because the loan estimate is also going to tell you what type of loan you're in. You know, are you in a loan with a prepayment penalty? Those are pretty rare, but if you're doing some exotic lending, maybe. Are you getting a fixed rate? Is it an adjustable rate? The loan estimate is going to have that. So it's a very big package. It can be overwhelming. A lot of it's legalese, but the key things you need are those two things. And then just in case you guys are having issues with your lender, it is important to know that throughout that package, there are um, the resources, you know, if you feel like you're being discriminated against, um, if you feel like uh, something's happening detrimental, there are the all the resources of who to reach out to. So that is in there as well. But overall, pay attention to the application, pay attention to the loan estimate. If it's not locked, that rate's not real and make sure you're just making sure the name, everything else is spelled great, okay? Spelled great, right? Anything you have questions, always ask your lender, but the initial loan disclosure is not the be all and end all. The number it says that you're gonna be coming in with cash to close, it's just an estimate at that time. We don't have enough information within the first three days to give you that bulletproof number. So. I hope this was helpful. As always, I am licensed in 48 states. You guys know I love this. So I would love to help you out. My team would love to help you. We are everywhere but Rhode Island and Utah. If you're in one of those states, I do have some very good friends at Guaranteed Rate who can take great care of you. So just let me know. But everyone else, we're here to support you. Thanks so much for watching.